Hi everyone and welcome. I'm so glad to have you here with me. This is a remake of my cornbread soap. I've made this, I, I think, two or three times here on YouTube in the past, but I've probably made it 20 or 30 times. I've made it several times this year. Locally, this is a very popular soap. Uh, maybe because, well, first of all, the cornmeal is local. This is not mine. In the past, I've used my own dried corn and ground it, but I can only grind it so fine. But I went to a local mill where they stone grind on big wheels the, the corn, and they're able to get it much finer. Let's see, I'm not sure if you can see that very clearly. Hold on one moment here. Let me get more light on the subject. Um, let's see. But this is a much more fine consistency. And what this adds to soap is a very gentle exfoliation. Now, why use why would I use cornmeal instead of pumice, which I've also done in other soaps? There are all sorts of things that you can use in soap as a exfoliant. What I like about cornmeal, this is organic, by the way, a very, um, comes from a beautiful farm, but I'm getting off topic here. What I like about cornmeal is that it starts out very exfoliating, but then it softens as it's wet, as it stays wet, the cornmeal softens and kind of dissolves onto the skin. And then the next layer of cornmeal underneath there starts exfoliating and so on and so on. And when the dry, when the soap dries, it becomes hard again. And I'm actually doing a Hey Patrick video, following this video, on adding food items such as cornmeal into soaps and why that's okay to do and some of the challenges with that, along with some of the benefits of that, all right? So I'm going to start out by combining the cornmeal into my oils and butters here. And here I have my regular combination of olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, and castor oil. And you could sift this. I've already pre-sifted this. Um, I suggest doing that so you don't end up with big clumps. But basically, I'm just hydrating this. So I'm just letting the oil absorb into it. The reason for that, I want it to pre-hydrate so that the lye solution doesn't bind up inside the cornmeal because what that can cause are little pockets in the corn in the uh, soap that may be lie heavy. So I want to prehydrate that cornmeal with the oils and then when we combine it we will have a much better emulsion, much more evenly balanced. And I'm going to be fragrancing this with eucalyptus, only eucalyptus. I just happen to love that combination of an exfoliating soap with uh, eucalyptus. I think that is just such a nice combination. So I'm just trying to mix it, making sure there are no more clumps, that the cornmeal is well distributed in the oils. I've got my aloe vera and my lye solution here ready to mix in. Lye solution into our oils here, our oils and our cornmeal. I'm first going to give this just a little bit of a buzz. Again, just to make sure that the cornmeal is all 
broken up, and it appears to be. All right, it's time to cut them. And I'm hoping, I tried to cut these a little sooner so, because I didn't want them to fully harden up because that cornmeal would drag through them. Uh, and oh, they're still a little dark in the center. That should even up here and as soon as they cool down, but I love the little speckles in them, the little golden speckles of the cornmeal. These are going to be so nice. I don't know if you're a big fan of an exfoliating soap yourself. I personally find them very useful. But then I work on a farm and I get kind of gruddy sometimes. I, I don't think gruddy is a word, but... Uh, <laughs> I do get a little messy and so having a good exfoliating soap is really really handy. I hope you've all had a good week, that things have been going well for you. Um, I have been super super busy uh, dealing with very busy at work, which is, that's a good thing. Um, I know that there are a lot of people who are unemployed or underemployed or certainly underpaid and all sorts of things. I have a lot of sympathy and <laughs> empathy for those folks because I know what a challenge it is in our times to work and to get by and it's so upsetting because I truly don't believe that the... Okay, now I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist because I don't necessarily believe in most conspiracies. But then again, I do believe that there are truly some conspiracies out there. If you didn't have a conspiracy, how could you have a conspiracy theory? <laughs> but to be quite honest with you, I can only speak for what I see here in America. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but we're dealing with uh, inflation right now, which is a normal part of the economy that we go through ups and down cycles of it uh, a lot throughout our history. It's not that unusual, nor is it um, a bad thing always, because sometimes it's a way of correcting things in our economy. I won't go into a lot of detail about that because that's not my forte. But here's what I do believe, and I believe it based on a lot of different criteria. It's not just me saying this. There are some big minds out there that share these thoughts, and that is that I believe that a lot of big corporations are just taking advantage of the current climate. Uh, COVID, uh, the supply chain issues and so and plus there's been a you know payroll increase across the country for many people to fifteen dollars per hour and these companies I think are using that as an excuse to increase pricing because all these companies with almost no exception are experiencing record time 
growth and profit margin uh, increases. So it's not like they had to raise their prices because their profits were down. Or even if they were down a little bit, that would be understandable that they would raise them a little bit. But some of these increases, they're affecting me. I have to buy feed for my animals this time of the year because, well, the crops don't grow. And I try to make hay <laughs> as when the sun shines, as they say, um, for the animals. But we didn't have the right rain at the right times. And we, long story short, I have to buy additional feed for my animals, as do most farmers, ranchers in this area. And, or, and in not just this area, but all over the country. And the prices have gone up astronomically, almost a third. Now, that may not sound like a lot, okay? If you're talking about $10, though, think about a third of $10. You're talking about $3.33. So what was $10 is now $13.33. That's my point. And when you're talking about buying hundreds of items, uh, that, you know, that, that may be required for you, your family, or your livestock, or whatever the case may be, you could be talking about a massive amount of money, you know? Uh, I know, I know, uh, this is a soaping channel. <laughs> I should keep my mouth shut about other things, but I do believe that a lot of these big companies, and I'm not going to name specific ones because I'm not looking for a lawsuit, but you know who they are. They're most companies in America, but uh, there are certain ones in your supermarket. Just when you're noticing prices of certain cereals or grains or vegetables that have gone up tremendously, there's nothing wrong with you reaching out to those companies on Facebook or Twitter, however you communicate or pen and paper. I don't care if you have a quill and a piece of parchment. Reach out to these companies and let them know that how it affects you and your family and that you see that their investors are making plenty of money, uh, that their stockholders are filling their wallets, uh, but you are, you know, you're not on the receiving end of that. Uh, they're basically charging the poor to make the rich richer. And I'm not one of those that believes that we should steal from the rich to feed the poor. I quite frankly believe that the rich should give to the poor out of their own hearts. I wish that they would. And that comes from education, from their own families. I can't speak for how people raise their children. Um, I don't have the children of my own, so I don't advise others on how to raise theirs. But I will. <laughs> and that's it. I think we should teach people to help our brothers and sisters that are in need. And these big corporations, uh, they're not going hungry. They're not missing out on making car payments or their mortgage payments. Uh, they're doing quite well. I know. Okay, that was the final loaf there, got it cut. These will be in the store in uh, the end of March. Um, they're nothing special to look at, they're just kind of a oatmeal -y kind of colored soap. But they are filled with the goodness of cornmeal right here from Texas. Um, I'm very happy uh, to present them. I think that they are great for exfoliation and just making you feel like a better person. <laughs> That's how they affect me anyway. I'm certainly a cleaner person. But uh, I want to thank you all so very much for all that you do, uh, for all that you are. Have a terrific day, everyone, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.